Um, so the next section of our, uh, our um, um, presentation um, will be uh, uh, provided by Mary Matividad of uh, Cancer Care Manitoba. Mary, you um, can you share your screen okay and start your slide set? Yeah, I'm uh, sharing it now. And please let me know if you can see it. It looks good. Looks good. I want to put it into presentation mode. Yeah, yeah, putting it in presentation mode. There we go. Perfect. Can everybody see it? Okay. Looks great. Oh, great. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Mary Natividad. I'm from Cancer Care Manitoba, and I'm doing this presentation with Dr. Jim Campbell. Uh, today, uh, we're going to do uh, presentation uh, about Cancer Care Manitoba and the Research Institute since we are new to the working groups. Uh, I'll go over our project background, our project objectives, our information flow, uh, our use cases, and followed by uh, Dr. Campbell with the analytics table deployment, cohort selection, ontology deployment, and followed by a demonstration. So first off, uh, where is Manitoba? So we are in Canada, we have a universal healthcare. We are just north of North Dakota. Uh, we have about a population of 1.35 million in Manitoba. So about cancer care Manitoba. So we are the provincially mandated cancer agency and we are responsible for setting the strategic uh, priorities and long-term planning for cancer and blood disorders. So we also provide uh, services for prevention, early detection, multidisciplinary cancer treatment, and supportive and end of life care. So a bit about our uh, Cancer Care Manitoba Research Institute, CCMR. Uh, we are closely affiliated with the University of Manitoba and we bring together the basic discovery scientists and clinical health services and patient experience scientists from the University of Manitoba and CCMB, uh, all of whom do cancer research and blood disorders. Uh, we were formerly named Manitoba Institute of Cell Biology back in 1969. And in 2015, we were named the Research Institute in Oncology and Hematology. And this was a joint institute of University of Manitoba and Cancer Care Manitoba. So our project background. Uh, currently, uh, we have multiple databases that require significant investments of time and resources. Uh, we uh, hired um, uh, consultants to go out there and do a scan of what product is out there that fits our needs. So through careful planning and decision making, I2B2 was selected to be our cancer informatics platform to address the inefficiencies of our current state. So to start our journey, we uh, started learning about uh, I2B2 by joining the working groups. And through the working groups, we got connected to Axiomedics who has a Canadian partner, Logibec, uh, and we, uh, we engage Logibec and Axiomedics for their consulting services. So we're hoping uh, once we go in production that I2B2 will decrease the project time, the cost, and the production clinical systems load, and it'll enable us to uh, a, a greater capability for our informatics research and collaboration. So we started our project objectives with setting up a minimum data set. And part of our challenge is uh, linking our cancer registry to our EMR, because there is no direct link from the tumor, our, uh, our, our tumor ID, to the rest of the data in our EMR. So we're going to store our analytics and linkage tables in a separate database. Uh, we're going to implement a CCMB I2B2 ontology, and we've been working with the ontology working group with Dr. Campbell uh, for the oncology the data fields. And we are going to do uh, extract, transform, and load from our multiple data sources. 
and into a central repository I2B2. So from there, uh, from I2B2, we're going to be using analytics applications such as SAS, R, Stata uh, to do the analytics. So we're not in production yet, but when we do, our, pro our information flow would look like this. So we're going to deploy our, our project in a phased approach, starting with phase one, which is our cancer registry and screening and our EMR. And then phase two would be our electronic ca data capture applications and our biobank, the Manitoba Tumor Bank. We're using Microsoft SQL Server as our back end, and we're going to be utilizing uh, SQL Server integration services to automate some parts of the processes. So from these sources, do ETL into an ETL database. Uh, for simplicity, we're just calling it an ETL database, but this is really where all the raw data is ported in, all the cleaning, all the linkage is done here, prior to transforming it into the I2B2 star schema shape into the I2B2 uh, data repository. And from there, our data users can extract data out through any analytics packages like SAS, R, Stata, or through the web client. So these are use cases, these are use cases, and these are types of research that we are already conducting now, which we hope would be uh, more streamlined once we start use, using I2B2. So to name a few, we do cell biology research, translational research, epidemiological research, genomics, health services, patient experience, clinical trial, uh, medical physics, screening research, and informatics research. Uh, from here, I'll pass the presentation to Dr. Campbell, and we'll save some time for the end uh, for questions. Thank you. Okay, I will stop sharing. Mute, Jim, you're on mute. Thank you. So in terms of uh, developing and deploying um, some of the architecture that Mary was describing, um, we've done several things at Nebraska to uh, basically identify, uh, to move her minimum data set um, into um, I2B2 in searchable manner. Um, one of our staff, Jay Pedersen, has written Python code, which um, is an update of code that was originally generated by um, Dan Connolly at the University of Kansas. But basically it extracts incrementally cancer registry data from NACR data files. That's the North American Association of Clinical Cancer Registries. Um, and it is the standard um, data dictionary by which uh, cancer registries exchange information um, and report to the feds. Um, and Jay's code basically extracts that into um, an analytics table that's going to be useful uh, for Mary and her research team. Um, we've added a SQL uh, procedure to um, extract from the analytics table, we call it the tumor table, a set of observation facts, which will uh, basically import the minimum data set that Mary wants to use for cohort uh, feasibility assessment um, into the I2B2 CRC cell. Um, thirdly, there's a SQL procedure that basically builds the I2B2 ontologies, um, and there are two. Uh, we have ICD-03 from <clears throat> the World Health Organization and SNOMED CT um, body structures and morphologies from the National Library of Medicine. Um, these are populated into the ontology cell in I2B2. Um, you install that and run your fact counting um, and um, you've got uh, 
I2B2 installed with your minimum data set. The tumor analytics table that uh, Jay is building out um, cross-references into um, I2B2. So patient num and counter num are links in the uh, tumor table that basically uh, correspond directly to um, the keys that we use in observation fact. We took the additional step of, ident of <clears throat> um, populating instance num in um, I2B2 with um, the uh, primary key for the tumor table. So Mary can do um, searching for um, cohorts and then basically extract all the case IDs that she wants to study further in her analytics environment. <clears throat> NACR is currently um, up to version 21, but it's highly variable. Um, what is actually deployed at individual sites um, across North America. Um, here at Nebraska, we are currently using version 18, but I'll tell you that um, if you look at um, various sites, there can be anything from version 16 uh, through version 21 that's supported in um, um, local tumor registries, depending on who their software vendor is. Um, the data dictionary, which I've referenced here, um, basically uh, relates all of those uh, versions uh, uh, changes, um, but it's a fairly complicated um, issue to move from one version to the next. And I'm glad to say that Jay's software handles everything up through version 18. Uh, we have not tested it out for version 21 yet. Um, for those of you who've looked at cancer registry data, you're undoubtedly aware of the fact that those are big tables with um, lots and lots and lots of, um, uh, of uh, pieces of data. Um, based on advice from the University of Iowa, we have, uh, Jay has deployed 648 data items from uh, the NACR data set that is given to us by our cancer registrar. Um, into the tumor table uh, for analytics use. So the cohort, the uh, minimum data set that Mary and her colleagues chose to basically assess feasibility um, um, and identify cohort size are listed here. Um, topography basically means the anatomy where the uh, cancer originated Morphology is the histologic type. It's what the pathologist diagnose, diagnoses when they look at it um, in, under a microscope. Behavior of disease is a WHO feature, whether it's benign, malignant, or uncertain in uh, its behavior. Um, the um, date of diagnosis, of course, goes into the uh, start date in uh, observation fact. And we also have the stage of diagnoses, both pathological and clinical. And you know, some people may not be aware that when the pathologist originally signs out a case, they will sign assign uh, staging scores, T, N, and M, for tumor size, nodes, and metastases um, based upon their pathological observations. But given the fact that they may not have all of the data, um, such as the results of scans and things like that, there is a subsequent clinical staging so that there's actually two sets of stage scores that are um, um, possible and are reported in the uh, data set. In terms of the ontologies that are relevant to um, these particular minimum data set features. Um, ICD-10, obviously, for cancer diagnoses, icd 3 and we added SNOMED CT for right reasons I'll explain in a second, um, for topography um, and for morphology. And icd 3 uh, that's a feature of behavior of disease. So just by way of a little peek into 
how this might be useful. Um, let's think about maybe some cohorts that we want to identify in our, um, in our registry. Um, how many cases of pathologic grade T4 cancer do I have of the upper outer quadrant of the left breast? And I basically um, concocted this case, if you will, uh, because I wanted to uh, basically show some of the uh, features that are available in terms of the anatomic um, and staging detail that are available in, in cancer registry. So we're looking basically um, for uh, breast cancers, all right? And we go to ICD-03 uh, topology, and um, it's organized alphabetically, uh, but um, um, you hover over the individual item, you see the uh, ICDO uh, code is C50. And the detail here indicates that there are uh, separate codes for various portions of the breast. And we're interested in the upper outer quadrant of the breast. Now, the use case basically calls for um, br left breast and in, um, the NACR data set, laterality is actually reported as a separate feature, okay? So we have deployed that along with the anatomy. Um, that does not apply to all type, um, all anatomical references, but in terms of anything that um, is, has a mirror symmetry in the human body, you've got the possibility of a laterality code as well. And we're interested in just the left breast, okay? Um, and I would mention that for all of the individual variables, um, including staging and for um, laterality, we have uh, implemented C uh, metadata XML in I2B2, so that as you can see, you can do searching by value. And we're interested in pathological tumor stage, okay? Um, so we'll grab that particular variable. And <clears throat> the metadata XML for um, the staging variables, because of the, the amount of variability in the way that many of these items are recorded, they're basically string data. Um, so I'm going to search for um, a string containing T4. And with that um, query to I2B2, we can basically go ahead and address the question of how many cases do we have with a T4 pathologic stage tumor of the upper outer quadrant of the left breast. That is far more detailed than, than many researchers are, um, are interested in searching, um, but I thought it was a useful demonstration of uh, some of the uh, features of the ICDO um, uh, ontology and the NACR data set. Let's try another case. What about how many cases of non-small cell carcinoma of the lung do I have in the registry? Uh, you may or may not know that clinically there's been a new set of treatments for non-small cell carcinoma. Um, so basically, first we'll take a look um, at morphology codes. That's the histology of the tumor. And we'll go to find non-small cell carcinoma. There we go. And then we're interested in lung cancer. And 
down here under bronchus and lung. Basically, we're interested in any site. Now, the way we have deployed the case material in I2B2, in order to find linked events, and I should have done this on my first search, that was my error, okay? They're basically linked by the encounter. Um, so the, the encounter at diagnosis, which we assign in observation fact, um, becomes the linking factor, which um, basically looks for events which are non-small cell carcinoma of the bronchus and lung. And there we have our cohort, um, you know, for that particular researcher. Now, one of the questions that Mary asked me um, when we uh, first um, demonstrated this to her was, why did we bother with SNOMED CT? And the answer to that question are two. Number one, um, pathologists use SNOMED CT almost exclusively, although cancer registrars use ICD-03. Um, but depending upon who your researcher might be, you know, they may have a slightly different set of requirements for um, their feasibility for their cohort definition. Um, and secondly, SNOMED CT has some features of anatomic specificity and so forth that you won't find in ICD-03. So for example, how many cases of melanoma originate in the skin of the head and neck, okay? And we can actually do this query with either set of ontologies, but looking at SNOMED, um, there is a lot more detail in terms of, of um, the granularity when it comes to identifying malignancy, okay? And, you know, if you take a look, for example, you see that malignant melanoma, there's lots and lots and lots of subtypes, which basically you have to assemble into a query in ICD-03. Um, SNOMED CT morphologies, basically allow you to um, query all of those um, using the power of the ontology. And then we're interested in the skin of the head and neck. And so if we go to SNOMED CT anatomy, um, it's quite complicated because there is a lot of detail. And so um, I would say that ICD-03 is maybe quicker for many use cases, but if you are looking um, you know, for an anatomic grouping, um, you may find that SNOMED supports that better. For example, here you see that in body regions, we've got skin structures, okay? And we've got skin structures of the head and neck. And we go ahead and look for linked events. Basically, we're looking for all cases of melanoma um, that originate in the skin of the head or neck. Um, and this is just an exemplar of how SNOMED CT um, may supplement the utility of browsing of your data uh, when it comes to um, cancer research. Jim, we have a couple questions. Would you like to yeah. answer? All right, copy. Please. I'm gonna I'm gonna um, unmute you and then you can ask your question. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi Jim, thanks for the presentation. One quick question about uh, now I see that in your uh, ontology, you are not only showing the number of patients, but also the number of facts. Uh, could you could you please elaborate on how you how you make that possible? Um, so you're talking about here in our ontology display? Yeah. Is yeah, that's just basically a feature of our fact counting software. Um, Jay Pedersen also developed that. Uh, we have um, or he has deployed it in such a way 
that it uh, counts specifically for the concept code and also the modifier code that's relevant, um, if, if it's relevant to the ontology. Um, and uh, these fact counts are run um, after we install um, uh, you know, a new uh, set of metadata, a new ontology. Uh, we load the concept dimension um, and then we run the uh, Jay's fact counting software and it populates this into the uh, metadata table. Yeah, so this is using the, probably using the total num field, uh, but I'm wondering if any, any changes were required in the web client or the web client works out of the box. Um, no changes to the client because all of the changes that are accomplished by the fact counting software are basically embedded in the metadata, which is used by the, by the I2B2 client. Got it. Thank you, Jim. And there was, Michelle, do you want to ask your question uh, live? Sure. I was just saying that it was nice use of the metadata XML. Um, do you use modifiers in any of these oncology ontologies? Use them in many, Michelle. Um, not particularly well. I've got one deployed in in the tumor data, but it is really not necessary to the function. Um, elsewhere in I two B two, you know, we use them a lot because they're the only way you can um, organize and link, you know multiple observations in one uh, complex fact, like an, a met order or something like that. Uh -huh. So in your met ontology, you have on, have modifiers, you're saying? Yes. So for example, day supply, the dose, um, what type of event it was, whether it was administration, dispensing, or ordering. Um, what so how was. does, can, can you explain how you use that? Like, because it, it looks like you have the drugs themselves in a separate tree. This is kind of different. Can you explain how that works? I would be glad to, but it is not a simple explanation. So if we want to set up a separate a separate event to you know discuss the use of modifiers, I'll be glad to do that. But I don't think we can cover it today. I see we've got five minutes left. Yeah, I mean that's a cool use of I'm, I haven't seen this type of use before. So we'd love to love to see how that works together with the actual drug, like how you very yeah. I think mm -hmm. that if 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 we've got interest in the ontology work group, we can set up a, a separate session just to talk, discuss those technically. Would that be okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, great. We have other questions? There is one from Philip. Philip, I'm going to unmute you. Um... Philip, go ahead. Oh, I I don't think I had a question. I was just saying what Michelle and Jim were discussing sounds like a perfect topic for our next working group discussion. Um, something we can, you know, go through in more detail. And obviously anyone here is, you know, who's interested in it can join. Um, I did see a question from Griffin in chat. So um, that, that I didn't quite, I don't think I heard an answer to, um, but I don't have anything else. Griffin, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think Javi was asking like how both numbers, the number of facts and the number of patients are displayed. And I'm guessing that your software just appends those counts to the name of the concept as opposed to using the web client's total num displaying feature. Is that correct? That's like you take the original correct. name of the concept, yeah. Yeah, that is correct. Is the that day that is embedded in the C name. So what you're seeing right there on screen is the C name as modified by Jay's fact counting software. 
Yeah, that's like a nice trick. I've seen that kind of before, where you can put, you know, extra metadata and just stick it at the end of a end of the concept. Just in a nice example. Of that. It's kind of cool. The whole of GPC does that, right? Um, that, I I cannot I cannot answer that for sure, Michelle. I believe so. Because that's basically what uh, Dan Connolly, you know, demonstrated to us a long time ago. Right. So anybody who's interested in any of these updates, including the tumor table uh, um, build, um, here is the reference site. These slides will be posted by Diane in the group. And I would ask if there's any other questions that um, that are for uh, Mary Natividad. 